The dawn of a new era has begun, a journey set to explore the wonders of the world game. Do you want to take the ride? Then get ready for Football 360. Welcome to Football 360, I'm Peter Capsanis. On tonight's show, we unearth some young and exciting players set to fly the flag for Australia. We also catch up with glory owner Tony Sage, who makes a promise for glory fans in the lead up to this weekend's clash against the victory. And a special feature on the Perth African Nations Cup. All that and more, but first, they came out of the blocks firing in all cylinders in 2011, winning the minor premiership and scooping the player of the year and the coach of the year awards. But that top five championship still eludes them. So what next? in 2012 for Baukata Soccer Club. How would you describe season 2011? Oh look, it was a great season for us, you know, the first season uh, for me at the club and, and with a, you know, a good group of players, we were expecting to be decent in the competition, but to finish on top of the, of the league and as the uh, Premier League uh, champs, I suppose, yeah, it was a great season for us. Yeah, not, not doing so well in the top five was a bit of a disappointment, but um, that's another part of the game I suppose that we've just got to improve on. If we had won it last year though, I think we would have turned around and said, uh, well, we're happy to win the Premier League um, first. I think that would have been our first priority. What brought you to Balcata? I'd previously spent about six or seven seasons with Floriat as the coach there and, and really enjoyed that time. I've loved being at Balcata even in the space of a year. I'm very supportive in my first year and, and were very ambitious to, to make the club go forward, to raise the profile of this club and to embed themselves in that, in that group of the top four clubs in the, in the league. If everything wasn't right, I wouldn't have been here. Steve Burton was a surprise packet of 2011. Do you think he'll be able to emulate his performance again in 2012? Yeah, tremendous player. He's become a, a captain pretty quickly in our side. Great goal scorer. I'd rather have him playing for me than against me. We have added a few new players to the squad who can, I believe, improve us. So who knows, we could uh, maybe just go that one step further. What's happened in the past is history. This year's the important one. So we're going to focus on this year. We're always working hard at whatever we do and, and we encourage each other and, uh, and plus we uh, look at the big picture. We're not just interested in the soccer side of it. We're interested in helping players become good people, teaching them right from wrong. And we've got uh, about 40 teams uh, he and they're all important. There's a lot of people interested in the uh, Premier League team there, but I'm interested in the whole lot of them. They're all important to me. Who are the big name players that this club has produced in its 35-year uh, history? Well, we've had uh, Richard Garcia, who's played for the Socceroos and played overseas. He he started his career here. Got uh, Adrian Medaski, he's played for the Socceroos and overseas there. He started uh, at our club. Uh, yeah, we've had lots of good players come through over the years. We always look and do, uh, do better than what we did last year, so we've got a tough job. We think we can do it. We'll give it our best shot, that's for sure. Hopefully, It'll pay to get maybe contracts with some A-League clubs or even getting opportunities overseas. And also the Joeys. I want to make a living out of football because I love it. Who are your top players? Any inspirational uh, figures? Gareth Bale. I just always thought he was a great player. Being part of the Football West program, is that part of an elite group? Yeah, definitely. This is very good. It's very beneficial to your skills and being a complete footballer. I've represented the Joeys on the 17s in a couple of tournaments in Japan and Thailand. So that was really good, I really enjoyed it over there. So hopefully I'll be able to play in the next World Cup for the Joes. It's going to be my goals. It's been their best season since joining the A-League and now Perth Glory are in the box seat to host a home final, but they still have to face off against Harry Kuehl's Melbourne victory. To get his thoughts on the game, we catch up with Glory owner Tony Sage. 
And they've got a lot of pride, that club. It's uh, one of the most successful clubs in Australia's history. So, uh, yeah, look, uh, they were hurt after that game. We embarrassed them. Uh, so they're going to come out firing. Uh, they've got about six or seven players that are playing for their positions in the team. So that's uh, going to be a very, very tough game for us. We'll, we will have a couple of players uh, nursing injuries coming back through. Hopefully Miller's going to be ready for the finals. Uh, but uh, look, I think that'll be a really tough game. Uh, we believe Harry is coming. We should get a crowd of 15,000. Uh, and you've got it here first. Anyone that buys a ticket for that game will get guaranteed a ticket for a final series game. So we're going to get ask everyone to keep their, their ticket stub uh, and uh, when the finals come up, because we're only going to play at Nib Stadium and only takes 19,000. So, um, you know, if you come to that last Melbourne victory game, you keep your ticket, you'll be able to get in and uh, buy a ticket for the finals. One of the regular features on Football 360 will be Matilda Katie Gill, and she caught up with fellow Matilda, Colette McCallum. Today we're fortunate enough to catch up with Colette McCallum, who is the Matilda's vice-captain and midfielder for the Perth Glory women's team. I've been hearing a little rumour that she's about to jet off overseas. I've um, decided to actually go over to the UK to play. Just signed with Lincoln Ladies, who are, I think last year came fourth in the league. I've always wanted to go over to Europe to see what it's like over there. I've you know been to America and stuff like that, so it's a different um, step in my career, and hopefully it goes well. This year, I decided to take a break with the Glory side. I thought I needed it mentally and physically. We started to feel that I wasn't enjoying the game as much as what I used to. To have that break and actually. You know, get that fire in my belly again. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to actually getting and playing games. But I don't like to look too far ahead. I just want to take it step by step and hopefully do well with the Lincoln ladies. Arsenal's the top team in England. They've done really well and I think they're still in the Champions League for the women's. To have a team like that, to verse them, uh, would be quite challenging. The league here, I think it's still growing quite a bit. I think it's getting a lot better, but in Europe it's still quite strong, so I want to try the UK and give it a go. How did you get into football? I guess everyone really wants to know how that happened. Well, that's my dad's fault. He um, got me into football at a very young age. He played semi-professional back in Scotland. I've loved it ever since, and then we moved over here um, at a very young age. always wanted to play for Australia when I was younger. You know, everyone always asks me if in any any sport, who would I go for? Australia or Scotland, so I say, I say Australia, but there's a little bit of me that goes for Scotland as well, so it'd be quite tough <laughs> to decide. So are you Rangers or Celtic? Definite Celtic fan. Any Rangers fans, I don't like them. In Africa, football is more than a game. In fact, football has helped many of the nations gain their independence. It has also helped many politicians gain power. But the one thing it's always done is unite the people. The Perth African Nations Cup is doing exactly the same here in Australia. This year in 2012 has seen over 300 competitors and over 16 teams take part. Football really is uniting the African people in Australia. The Perth African Nations Cup was an organically created into community tournament which was started by a number of people who had vested interests in their own communities and they wanted to use sport, specifically the world game as a tool to enhance the relationships between communities and create friendship in Perth which is where a lot of people were starting their new homes and new lives. Some may say to organise a tournament with countries from a continent with so many trouble spots would be a recipe for disaster. But sport rises above all these although a strong rivalry still exists. Definitely, definitely. I like the case where you have like Burundi versus Congo and you know Ethiopia, Eritrea, you know, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Uganda. Yeah, it's definitely there. Football plays a bigger role in helping these new Australians settle in than many people realise. Soccer is one of the biggest uh, instruments that we have been able to use to be able to really say we are part of this community. Football is like part of our life because that's how we grew up doing it, there was nothing else. We came to Australia, the couple of years were a bit hard because we couldn't get into the system and that much. When you come to football, it doesn't matter what colour, what race, it does have a language of its own. But the good thing is everyone understands it, it's not complicated. Soccer is very important for the people to get to know people, easy to meet people and to understand the culture and the system, everything. It helps a lot. 
Football is also playing a major role off the pitch as well as within the African communities. Has it broken down barriers for you in Australia? A lot. I actually met so many friends that it would have been difficult for me to meet them without, without having access to playing uh, soccer. The Perth African Nations Cup was played over three weekends at the home of Forestfield United and 16 teams had been whittled down to two. Both had earned their place in the final through their football alone. Congo in yellow would meet Nigeria in white in the final. In extremely windy conditions, Nigeria opened the scoring through Ishmael Kawara and went in at half-time with a 1-0 lead. Congo dominated the second half and pulled level through Joseph Wilonja. Then they took the lead thanks to a goal from Anthony Bafabusha. A third goal and a second from Joseph Wilonja virtually put the game out of Nigeria's reach. But the coup de grace came from a wonderful free kick by Moses Kalau, which sealed the game and a 4-1 victory to Congo. This was Congo's first ever win in the Perth African Nations Cup. With more and more Africans coming to Australia, how long will it be before we see an African-Australian representing the nation? I really do think that some of the players in this tournament will um, shine in future years. Uh, the next World Cup in Brazil, yeah, someone from the Socceroos from Africa. One day it's going to happen. Give it two, three years from now, I'm pretty sure there'll be another African coming up. It will give motivation for the young players, knowing that that guy made it, they'll be all, oh, why not me? In a couple of years I can be there as well. That wraps up our first edition of Football 360. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did. Remember, drop us a line and we'll see you again next week. Bye for now.